welcome to, I'm about to get dazzled, a new vlog. We are not in the Cotswolds for this vlog. We are in, are we actually in the south of Spain? I don't actually know what coast we're on. Do you know what? <laughs> I think we're on I the... have no idea. We're obviously in Catalonia, yeah. aren't we? We mm -hmm. are in Sitges, yeah. which is about, I think it's probably an hour from Barcelona. It's, it's about, about half an hour from Barcelona Airport. Five minutes south of Barcelona. Yeah. Um, so we're here on a family holiday. At the moment, it's just Charlie and I in the car. We're driving. So basically, Charlie and I are staying at the Little Beach House, which is the Soho house um, of Sitges. But it's in a lovely little village called Garaf, which is about 15 minutes down a very windy road, which we're currently driving away from Sitges, where my mum my brother are staying. My mum lived in Spain for nearly 20 years. My brother was born in Spain and so they absolutely love holidaying here and it's the first, is this the first time you've holidayed with Jamie? Yeah, so it's a really exciting thing, isn't it? Because so it's the first time, obviously we've been together 10 and a half years. Mm -hmm. First time I've been away with your brother. Aww. First time your brother has been on an airplane or abroad mm -hmm. in I think we worked out about 14 or 15 years. Yeah, he got a little he's, bit emotional. He's, he's got, um, well, five children so obviously it's quite it's a lot more complicated going abroad as I'm sure some of your viewers might appreciate yes. when you've got five fairly young children and the yes. uh, costs involved so um, yeah it's he got very emotional it's really exciting it's really um, nice. and it's it's it sort of felt right that we would come to Spain where obviously Jamie is half Spanish yeah hi mate and um, hi, mate. and obviously your mum has all the connections here absolutely but it's uh, it's it's been lovely thus far hasn't and it? we can put our Spanish into practice so we flew flew in this morning. Uh, we drove straight down to Sitges, got Lala and Jay checked into their hotel and then we wandered towards the town. We didn't make it as far as the town because we were very hungry and we stopped off. I meant to just check the name of it. Um, I'll pop it on the screen here. Actually, I think I filmed a clip of us walking in so I'll pop it on the screen here. Um, but it was just somewhere that sounded familiar. I think we'd read it on a few uh, blog posts that it was a fairly decent place to stop for lunch and actually it was de delicious exactly what we wanted really nice tapas i probably will do a blog post on just you know how to spend 48 hours in sitges or how to do like a long weekend in do, barcelona do you know what though that's what some, someone that i was chatting to about sitges because we've obviously never been here and we have been to barcelona have, a couple of times but okay 15 years ago well, yeah no more than that but, yeah. but in reality we've never been here together mm -hmm. and someone actually did say that to me they were like Unlike Barcelona, mm -hmm. where you obviously have to ideally research ahead where you eat, the yeah. same way you would in London, Paris, Rome, yeah. because it's quite you touristy. Yeah. Um, in Sitges, there, ev good. everywhere tends to be a really good standard of tapas. So yeah. we've 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 definitely uh, found that to be true so far. Catalonia, as a region, is quite a foodie region. Easy in fact, the roundabout at the first exit and continue to follow C31. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, yes, Catalonia is known for its food, so so far so good. It was delicious tapas. It was a nice um, kind of like beach club, but we did say the restaurant decor could definitely have been improved. But do you know what? When you come to Spain, you often find that like the best food is not in the bougies looking I'd places. say that actually tends to be the case in a lot of Europe. Like yeah. even when we went to, where did we go with Lidia and Ali? Not Provence. Where was it in Al France you went? Yeah, and the best food we had on that trip was in the places. most rustic. And I look, don't get me wrong, in the UK you get that as well, but maybe not quite as much now because yeah. uh, people obviously choose up the interiors. So don't judge a book by its cover is the moral of that story. So we spent the Please afternoon- around the bar at the second exit and continued. So Charlie and I then checked into our hotel. Um, it's a really sweet, very tiny, it's probably the smallest Soho house aside from the one in Mayfair. Um, but perfectly lovely. It's obviously on the beach. It used to be just a very small family run hotel and then Soho took it over about six years ago, I believe. And we're gonna spend the whole day there tomorrow, but this evening- As a four. As a four. Um, but this evening we're heading- there Sorry about- right. Sorry about the lighting, by the way. But this evening we're heading back into Sidge's old town and we're just going to have a little wander around and hopefully find a lovely spot for some paella. 
for our dinner. Okay, so we've managed to park up, which is no oh, easy feat when stressful. we rented a ginormous car and the um, underground car parks with yeah. deliberately placed concrete pillars. <laughs> to smash your car up the second you rent I'm it. Sure they, I'm sure they have an agreement with the rental companies just to try and make more money. Quite possibly. But we're parked up, we're on the promenade, so a lot of European beach towns often have these big long promenades. You can walk along the beach, beach on one side and lovely restaurants on the other. This restaurant behind me here is called Chiringuito and it's, it was where we were aiming for lunch but we never got this far. And fun fact, there are so many places called Chiringuito, for example, in Ibiza and well, all over Spain. Basically like Taverna. Yes. It? Yeah, well kind of, but this was the first one apparently, the very first, the original Chiringuito, according to the blog post that I read, but feel free to fact check me on that one. First sausage spot of the holiday! Charlie's spotted our future so, Catalonian farmhouse. Price on request. Let me know in the comments what you think this house is cost. It's actually older than our house. Older than our house. My goodness. It does look rather beautiful. Strawtop Cottage goes to Spain. So I'd love to know how old this is. The palms and the blue sky in the background. And then the port of Garaf. Such a lovely little village. I'm gonna go and head down that direction and see if we can find some ice cream. Hello my darlings, I must apologise that this is the first time I'm properly talking to you this morning. We've had a very lovely relaxed morning so far, we had a breakfast here at the little beach house and then we've just spent the entire morning on the beach. What's really lovely is if you're staying here at the hotel there are some really lovely beach beds and you can order, it's literally... <laughs> like a Spanish version of the Soho Farmhouse menu. So, so many things we're already familiar with. I'm probably going to order an Eastern Standard with my lunch, which we're going to have in a second. I've come to the room to do a little bit of a skin and makeup refresh for lunch. We're going to sit, actually we haven't decided, we might have lunch on the beach, we might have lunch on the terrace restaurant, but I've been in the sun all morning, so my skin and um, face is in need of a little bit of pampering. So I thought I'd just come and share with you my kind of holiday, summer, glowing makeup routine. So, where is my SPF? The only thing that I've had on my face all morning so far is the Beauty Pie Featherlight SPF 50. This is very quickly becoming one of my favorites. I'm not a fan of SPFs that give you that kind of white finish to your skin. This also acts as a primer, so if you did want to put a little bit of makeup on top, it works really perfectly for that. But it doesn't leave any white marks on your skin, so this is the only thing I've had on my face so far today. But I must admit, when we go for lunch, I like to, if I can, do a little facial refresh, rehydrate my skin, and depending on where we're going, if it's somewhere a bit smarter, just add a really small amount of very natural kind of glowing makeup. And I would say that what I'm about to do is pretty much my go-to kind of holiday makeup routine. So I thought I would share it with you. Skincare and rehydrating the skin is always my number one priority. I'm going to apply, first of all, the Beauty Pie Youth Bomb. This is one of the new, um, new arrivals from Beauty Pie. It's got 15 active ingredients. I believe it's 44 pounds, which for an intensive serum like this, I think is an incredible price. So as a reminder, 
Beauty Pie works almost like a beauty membership. Um, you can sign up to get yearly membership and I've got my Josie sent me code which will get you £10 off your annual membership. And then once you're signed up, you have access essentially to the most incredible formulations, incredible ingredients, but you're not paying those crazy prices for the brands that you see in like Selfridges, Space NK, you're not paying those inflated prices. What you're paying for cutting out the middleman is what's inside the products, which to be honest is how it should be. You'll have heard me talking about so many Beauty Pie products in the past. So the Youth Bomb, as you can see, it's just instantly given my skin a glow, ultra hydrating. It says it's designed with an exclusive Biolog Elastic Complex to help firm, lift and brighten, visibly soften lines and wrinkles, boost radiance and enhance luminosity. And this is a Swiss made formula. And then because we will be spending the afternoon on the beach, I'm gonna apply a little bit more of the SPF as well. So as you can see, really lightweight SPF and doesn't leave my skin looking white. So in the summer on the beach, I don't like anything too thick, anything too heavy. I just want something really lightweight, but just the tiniest bit of cover coverage to give me that kind of, where's my beauty blender? I'm down to my last beauty pie beauty sponge. I always use these as an example for <laughs> why you should use beauty pie. So one beauty blender, one traditional makeup sponge costs 17 pounds. For less than that from beauty pie, you quite literally get 10, which I think is absolutely incredible. I mean, a sponge should not be expensive. With beauty pie, I feel like you're really paying for the product as opposed to the marketing. So I'm gonna apply the sheer tinted oil-free SPF 20. This is a fantastic everyday base for summer, but also while you're on holiday. It's really, really lightweight, but still gives you just that little bit of coverage. If, like me, you feel more confident with a little bit of coverage for lunch, or if you're heading out in the evenings, or you just want a really lovely, natural, everyday makeup look, you can apply this like a moisturizer. Um, so you don't necessarily need a beauty sponge, but I do find that a sponge just gives it that really gorgeous, flawless finish. So the amount that I've applied here is probably a pea-sized amount. You could most definitely add to this if you want just a little bit more coverage. But for me, this is absolutely perfect. If I keep on top of my skincare routine when I'm on holiday, just to make sure that my skin is always hydrated, then I find that just a little bit of um, a lightweight tinted moisturizer is more than enough. On my lips all day, I've had on the Beauty Pie Super Healthy Skin. This is their nourishing SPF 30 lip balm. So straight after putting on my base, I'll just top this off a little bit. Oh, and the base is also SPF 20, but we do have the Featherlight 50 on underneath. And now in my beach bag, I obviously don't want to make a bag full of loads of different products, but I do have this palette. It reminds me somewhat of my Charlotte Tilbury, I think it's called Supermodel in a Palette. Um, it's got my bronze, my blush, my highlight, and three different eyeshadow palettes, and a really big mirror in the lid, which if you're out, on the beach or on a boat day or on a summer day trip, then having a really big mirror in your bag is very helpful. So I'm just gonna start with a tiny bit of this middle eyeshadow. It's a really nice natural brownie shade. I never really want to feel like I look like I'm wearing too much makeup when I'm on the beach, but this just gives a really gorgeous even coverage over my eyelids. And then the darker shade just on the crease. I'm literally applying the most minimal amount that you could possibly imagine applying. Also in the summer, especially while I'm on holiday, I don't want to spend a lot of time doing my makeup. I want to be outside, I want to be drinking rosé with friends, so if I can have everything in one palette, that is fantastic news. It means I can get my makeup done so much more quickly. So I'm going to apply the blush from here just a tiny bit on the apples of my cheeks and working it up all the way to my hairline. And then a quick swipe over the bronze shade here. And I feel like that just gives a little bit of life to my complexion. I would normally save the highlight for the evening, 
so that's all I'm going to use from this palette for now. Um, what I am going to apply is a little bit of lip colour. This is the Nothing Nude Lip Balm. It's a really moisturising, balmy lipstick from Beauty Pie in this really gorgeous natural, almost brownie pink shade. They've got some really gorgeous natural colours and I feel like it's just a case of finding a shade which is almost your lips but better because again we don't want to look like we've got a face full of makeup. But what I am going to finish with is the Fresh Glow Breathable Setting Spray. Not only really lovely and hydrating, but also just gently sets my makeup. So even if I am um, sat outside with the sun coming down on my face, then it's not going to melt away the makeup that I've just applied. Okay, so that's literally all I'm going to do for my makeup. It took me, I've been filming for 11 minutes. I would say if I dash to the bathroom with just those few products in my makeup bag, I can get that done in the space of two minutes. It's really no time at all away from the beach or away from my friends. But seeing as I'm in the room, I'm going to just do a little finishing touch. This is the Beauty Pie Awesome Bronze Luxe Shimmer Oil Body Balm. I like to apply this to my neck and my chest area, but also just a delicate buffing over my shins. And it is so flattering, just looks as though you have caught the sun in such a beautiful way. You can apply this like a, lo like a normal moisturizer, or you can just take a little brush, get your jewelry out of the way. and just brush this onto your collarbones for the most gorgeous golden hour glow and it smells so incredible. Really, really subtle, but just gives you the most beautiful glow on your skin. So there we go, my darlings. We are now ready for lunch. These are the products that I keep in my beach bag and also perfect for an everyday summer makeup look. Really quick, really easy, but my one recommendation is always to just focus on the skincare, focus on those products which are going to help your skin glow. So my SPF and my Youth Balm are my current go-tos for a summer makeup look, but also things that I've got with me, my Japan Fusion um, Genius Lift Elixir, of course, my Triple Hyaluronic Acid, as a reminder, I do have a blog post with all of my beauty pie favorites, whether it's skincare, pampering products, um, body care. I've got my nourishing body balm with me as well, which is fantastic after a day in the sun. Hair care as well, you name it. And my code Josie sent me will get you £10 off your annual membership, which will enable you to have access to these members only prices so that you can get the best products at the most incredible price. But darlings, um, I'm going to head for lunch now. I'm pretty sure we have seen um, jamón ibérico, potatoes bravas, and so many of my Spanish favorites here on the menu. And then afterwards, we're gonna have a little wander into the beautiful village of Garaf. So without further ado, let's get going. <laughs> Well, I hope you can hear me over the wind, but I have now caught up on all of the episodes that I have downloaded of Love Island. Yes, I'm watching it this year. I've just gone to watch episode seven and my iPhone is saying no because I'm not in the UK. I feel like this is literally the perfect opportunity <laughs> to use my Surfshark. So I'm just going to change my location back to the UK, London. And let's try again. called Al Fresco. Good 
Good morning, my darlings. It is now day two here in Sidges, or Garaf rather, um, and we're actually heading to Barcelona later today. So we've just done two nights here in Garaf, and we're going to do two nights at the Soho House in Barcelona. While we've been here, obviously I've not, <laughs> I've not vlogged very much, which I feel very guilty about, but it really is like a pure, pure holiday and yesterday was we were just on the beach for the entire day which was really really lovely um but I thought I would I've had a lot of messages about the Soho Beach House while we've been here so I thought I would um try to show you a little bit more today they're definitely not as strict here when it comes to um like taking photos and things like that it's literally the tiniest beach house it used to be a small little fisherman family owned um hotel and we are on a beach very close to a village called Garaf, which i did explore yesterday i think i showed you a few little clips it's a really sweet little village i think there's one supermarket shop it's not touristy at all but there are a couple of really lovely restaurants i believe the section of the beach here i'm just gonna do my skincare while I'm talking to you. Same as yesterday, starting with the Beauty Pie Youth Bomb. Um, yeah, so outside the front of the Soho Beach Hotel, and there's only 17 little rooms here, there's um, a breakfast room, a terrace, an outdoor terrace, a kind of roof terrace. I think 15 of the rooms are the same, and then I believe two of them have got like a little a bigger balcony and bathtubs out on the balcony so um yeah it depends depends what kind of vibe you want but the rooms are pretty small but you know what you're gonna get with a Soho house bedroom like it's all the typical stuff if i show you over here you've got the nespresso machine you've got um the shoreditch grind coffee pods some very nice snacks actually they've got the torres crisps there's some oh Oh, I might try those. Yummy. Um, and then you've got your ooh, drinks down here in the mini bar section. Wardrobes along here and a small little bathroom, which is currently just filled with all of our products. And of course, the usual Soho House cow shed products. Next, I'm going to pop on my triple hyaluronic acid elastic lifting serum this is an eye serum again from beauty pie it's a really nice little tiny one great for travel um but also it's super hydrating so if you just want something that's gonna inject your eye area with some major <clears throat> major moisture this is a great one and i just take it all around the eye area um, so yeah, I think we've obviously been able to bring my mum and my brother here, so you are allowed guests the same way as you are in the normal Soho houses, and I think that the beach deck chairs, which are definitely the, the nicest area to be on the beach, are for hotel guests and their guests as priority, and then if general Soho house members come along, for example, for a day trip from Barcelona because the Barcelona house and this house do offer a shuttle. So it's about half an hour away, I think, um, on a very twisty, <laughs> windy road, but you could stay at you could stay at Barcelona and come here for the day, which I think is a really, really good idea. I'm all about layering my serums when we're away to get all of the benefits. I just opened up the door, so you probably get a bit of the wave noise now. This is the Japan Fusion Genius Lift Elixir. And I always feel like with this, my skin just drinks it in and instantly feels hydrated. It's great for adding a little bit of firmness and elasticity to the skin. And then of course, SPF, same as yesterday, the Featherlight UVA UVB. What was I saying? Um, yeah, so as hotel guests, obviously you get to use the nice deck chairs with the parasols and um, there is waiter service on the beach so you can get all of your kind of Soho House favourites, Lady A Rosé, um, you can even get Eastern Standards, you can get Frosé, although I ordered Frosé twice yesterday, the first time I had to ask three different people <laughs> and it eventually arrived and then the second time an hour went by I'd asked again three different people <laughs> to check on the order and it never arrived that's the one thing the service here is not quite um like usual soho house service but at the same time 
it's a lovely place, the decor is beautiful, the food is fantastic, the food that we had for lunch yesterday was really, really nice. Um, so I would definitely stay here again, but my one tiny thing would be that it's not quite usual Soho House service. What else can I tell you? Um, I would recommend renting a car, especially if you want to go and explore Sidges, which is where we went for dinner last night. It's the bigger town. It's got a really beautiful old town area, gorgeous old church, which is very iconic. Sidges is really known for its gay community, and at the moment it's actually gay pride in Sidges. So it's really lively. Sidges is really known also for just having loads of events. I think I read somewhere they have over 50 events a year, so chances are when you come, there will be an event in Sidges. It's nice to have that kind of atmosphere. Um, I don't really know what else I can tell you. If you've got any more questions, then obviously you can ask me in the comments. But yeah, the plan today, I think Charlie and I are just going to walk along the beach and um, just explore the little village of Garaf a little bit more. There's not that much to see there, but it's just a nice morning walk. And then we're going to have breakfast here morning on the beach, maybe a very light lunch on the beach, it's a slightly different menu on the beach as it is to the terrace restaurant here. Generally here it's just a really nice kind of buzzy vibe as we always do, Charlie's <laughs> made friends with a couple of different couples, one of whom actually lives in the Cotswolds very close to Soho Farmhouse, so we've already arranged to go for a barbecue with them when we're back. Um, so yeah, it's just a really nice group of people, lots of Spanish people here, lots of um, people from Barcelona come down for the weekend. Today's Monday, so I think it might be a little bit more quiet, but yeah, it should be a lovely day. So I'm going to put some SPF on my body. We are using the Cordly, I actually used Factor 50 yesterday. I'm still going to put Factor 50 on my chest and shoulders and back, but on my arms and legs I'm going to use my factor 30 this is the beautifying sun care oil and it's part of their ocean protect range so it's formulated without ingredients that can be harmful to coral and sea life so very important to consider that with your sun cream if you're going to be in the sea so we've got to check out the room at 12 so i'm going to dash around and throw my bits in the suitcase um, so that we can enjoy the morning on the beach and then head up to barcelona another beautiful and very calm morning Parasols all up. So this is the Soho Beach House section. I believe only hotel guests and members can use these beds. And then this is the little village of Garaf. There's a little restaurant there called Chiringuito. And then one up higher, I think it's called La Cupola. And they're both very lovely restaurants. We actually couldn't get a booking in either of them. They're both fully booked. And actually, um, the smarter one, the Cupola, a couple is actually shut today, which is a shame. Um, but next time we'll know that we do need to make reservations. But as hotel guests, we don't need to make reservations in the um, hotel restaurant here. And then the rest of the beach is a public beach. And all of these rooms along here are... Every room at the beach house is beach facing, which is lovely. So this is literally the entire hotel, really. You've got the restaurant here, terrace further back there, tiny little lounge area here and then another little lounge area here with Charlie's favorite Thunderbirds window <laughs> with yeah. a great view. A couple of little seating areas, and that's, that's it. Good window cleaners, yeah. <laughs> good window cleaners. Well, you gotta keep that clean every yeah. day, probably. Last night yeah. we came home and the sun, uh, the moon was above here and you could just see all the moonlight across the ocean. It's quite magical. We're just taking a pre-breakfast stroll to Garaf and these are some lovely, very beautifully painted beach huts. They remind us of the beach huts that we saw at West Wishing. Although nicer, I would say, don't you? Yeah, oh gosh, yeah, hell of a lot nicer. And there's a tractor on the beach, so naturally Charlie and I feel very at home here. Yeah. What's no, he doing? Is he literally just evening it out? I really don't know, but the, um, these beach huts, these are proper homes. Like you can live and stay in these. Wow. There's toilets, there's plumbing, there's electricity. The ones at West Virginia you can't stay in overnight. No. The joke is, they're probably still not that much bigger than West Virginia. I don't know. The funny thing is, we'll take a step back and show you. They're all unique, they're all different, and yet they're all in the same colours, which makes them look so beautiful, this green and white. But some of them are two-storey, some of them are just tiny little ones 
Some of them have got roof terraces. How lovely. Yeah. Are we allowed to walk on where he's just smoothed out? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like he would be livid. He's literally here to smooth out the beach. Well, I feel like we just manifested that because there was a chap sat on his kind of veranda on one of these and um, we said hello. Turns out that he was sat next to us on the table next to us at lunch yesterday and he invited us in for a little look so we yeah. just had to we just got the opportunity to have a little look inside they're quite Beautiful big actually veranda. yeah they go back quite far don't so they? he had a small kitchen yeah which to be honest is a kitchen not dissimilar to like the average london apartment yeah um he had two bedrooms two bedrooms and a lounge and a fully functioning bathroom and then so much better than a like yeah beach shack yeah. so much more and um, he was showing us as well the um of course at night time you can just sort of sit on the beach immediately outside and yeah. it's just magical no one's here because the moon is literally above you here and uh, he said in winter the sea comes all the way up he was literally fishing from his veranda and he could swim <laughs> to Soho house and he also said that um most of these i think he said that nothing had come up for sale along here years. in 30 years apart from his which he purchased three years ago many of them just go down and down in the family which i think is quite similar to what happens in the uk um, well, I think it's like any of these sort of things. They're in a finite. There's only what? There's only probably twelve here. Um, no. And twenty. Do you think? Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, you're going to hang on to them, aren't you? Mm. They're like a family heirloom almost. Yeah. Spectacular. Beautiful. <laughs> We're just trying to figure out what on earth the aim of what this tractor driver is actually doing is. He doesn't seem to be really moving it that much. He's really just smoothing it out, which seems totally pointless. And he's only doing it in one area. He's been in that yeah. same area for ages. So strange. And I love that there's a lady defiantly sunbathing here. So he's having to do his job around her. <sighs> she could have chosen anywhere. <laughs> anyway, what a beautiful view. Yeah, so no the idea. Soho Beach is the only um, hotel and really proper establishment on the beach aside from the huts. Beautiful. And then this is the way into the town. We've just had breakfast and I'm doing a little bit more hotel exploring. This is the roof terrace. Nobody up here this morning. There's a little bar. It's so much quieter here today. It's Monday and I think all the Barcelona people are back at work, all the holiday makers. Well, I guess it's changeover day, so I imagine it'll get busier later. This is a lovely spot. It's 10 o'clock and there's hardly even anybody on the beach. Very peaceful. Charlie's just gone for a dip. The beach is so much quieter today. If you are a fan of quiet beaches, here's James Bond, then definitely Mondays and Tuesdays are gonna be the days you want to come. I think this is the best time of year as well before school holidays, if you like a quiet beach. Here are my beach essentials. I thought I would show you. There's not really too much I can vlog on a beach day, but I'll show you what's in my beach bag. My Amazon fan is an absolute essential especially when it's a very still day. Gosh, it makes so much difference. We are pouring our waters into our cooler cool bottles. Helps keep them cool and sand free all day. Ocean safe. Oh, I've got my SPF. One. Your game changing one. Yeah, what, what's it called? Oh yeah, the, what the, the ocean bottle. And then I've got my SPF 30 lip balm from Beauty Pie, Sunny's. And this is Jade Beer's latest book, The Last Dress from Paris which I'm reading ahead of doing an interview with her on an Instagram Live next week. Charlie has accosted my Amazon water bottle. Yeah, Tell I us really why like you're a fan. Well, we obviously have Lark bottles. Yeah. And 
I do like lark, but they're metal. They dent and scratch and get they're battered. They're quite heavy as they're well, aren't they? quite heavy. And this is a slightly better size. So I'd say lark's bigger. Yep. This is a good handy size. I'm not going to do it because I've got it full of water. But if you take... It's quite versatile. So obviously this is metal, this is plastic. If you take this off, that becomes a cup. Mm -hmm. And this is a thermos. So you could have hot chocolate, coffee or whatever in there. And the so cup is water. the perfect size for you to have an espresso. Exactly. Or you could just have a latte in there. And you take mm. the whole thing off. That bit. So and I it's made it's of really, recycled ocean plastic. It's a really clever idea. And didn't you say they're going to have them in all the Soho houses yeah. soon? Yeah, I think he started selling them. Hmm. He. Nick. He. <laughs> they. Nick's, Nick's not working on a stall selling them. <laughs> I, think, I think it, I think someone well, told ben me does. that Nick, <laughs> Yeah, I think <laughs> someone that told me that Nick um, has asked the houses to start stocking them. Hmm. They should do. It's a good idea. my darlings so after a 40 minute drive well <laughs> actually it was more like an hour because we missed a couple of the little side street turns and let me tell you Barcelona is a maze a maze and a rat run especially if you're in a big car but we have now arrived to our second hotel of this trip which is the Soho House Barcelona not sponsored by Soho House but we just thought we would treat ourselves and actually stay here. Both Charlie and I have visited this house a couple of times before. It's really lovely and we've treated ourselves to one of the corner rooms. So I'm going to give you a little tour. As you can see we're starting off in the bathroom. We've got this really beautiful big double sink which is rather gorgeous. Of course cow shed amenities, um, lovely pewter towel rails, huge bath. Oh my gosh absolutely gorgeous. Um, lovely wooden floors and toilet cubicles beautiful panelling throughout the whole room. It's really historical and lovely. Do you think this panelling is original? I don't know. It feels, this panelling and the flooring feels original, but then obviously this is quite well, an old house. Soho love to buy old buildings, don't they? This is probably like an eight or nine year old house, I think. Maybe older. Yeah. We've got the bar area here with all of the usual bits and bobs. Marshall speaker. don't know if you noticed, but the Marshall speaker in the beach house was raffia. Or rattan, and then I guess we've got all of the lovely hair, yeah, so lovely it's... bits and bobs. You think I'm George Smith? Yeah, it feels nice. Well, this is a great mirror for outfit of the day. I'm wearing my lovely little Alame um, dress that I got on Farfetch. My Farfetch discount code should just about still be working. Cute little lamp with raffia lampshade. Wow, it really is an it's amazing room. Battered old leather oh, armchairs, club, club chairs. Oh, this is so nice lovely. View. I think this must be one of their nicest rooms, you know. Wow, oh this gosh, this view. Oh my goodness, it's stunning. This is the little plaza. The next road along is La Rambla. There's a lovely roof terrace up there. And then our view, this side is the port. Gorgeous, and that sail-like item in the background is the W Hotel. Lovely sofa that Charlie thinks is George Smith. And a really huge bed. It's probably a Super King. Let's have a look. Super King. Mm -hmm. Or maybe bigger. That, that is bigger than our bed at home, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be an Emperor. Wow, it's gorgeous. So, Ooh. what's that? Ah, so they didn't have this in the beach house. But they've got the Soho Skin products here, which we tried at the um, yeah. dinner. The event. Well, this is really, really lovely. So we're going to have a little change around, change over, shower, freshen up, and then we are going to head upstairs to the roof for some tapas. So after a very quick change over, I have popped on my bright coral. I thought it was perfect for Barcelona. Bright red uh, dress from Leo Lin. I gave it a super quick steam, and then I have got my Valentino accessories, my rock studs, and my little raffia bag. Hair tied away in a bun because it's just too humid and hot to do anything with it. And I feel like with a dress like this, it's quite nice to have a slightly more relaxed hairstyle. So fingers crossed we're going to be able to get a table on the roof. 
it is Monday night so it could be quite busy because of the under 27s so we're gonna head upstairs and take a look Thank you. 